these uh, thermostats or thermometers that go on this the stove pipe really makes a big difference haven't seen anything have seen a couple of birds and two very small squirrels as much but you can see the pie filling oozing out that's going to be really good Welcome to another edition of Time by the Tent. Leaves have really began to make their presence here. Got up here late, I'm gonna get stuff out of the car and then head right to the stand. On the way up, there was a deer that walked in front of the stand that I was intending to hunt tonight. I'll have about an hour in order to uh, hunt. Everything in the tent looks good not too chilly and uh, I'll see you out in the tree stand. Well, I made it back to camp. Didn't see anything, hear anything, no birds, no squirrels, no deer. The deer that I uh, had on trail camera at 424 walked within three steps of the actual tree that I'm standing, I'm up in. Now, even on a normal day, I got here later than normal, but even on a normal time frame, I wouldn't have been in that stand when that deer would have walked by in that particular situation. So I'm going to get supper going whenever I uh, get that going. I'll show you that. I'm going to get this tent stove going so we can get some warmth in here because it's about 38, 39, 40 degrees. And uh, we'll go from there. Got some birch bark going there. And last week when it was really warm, I took some pine and cut that down and, uh, into small pieces. And we're going to try to get this thing blazing warm to enjoy the night in the tent. Okay, got rainbow chili cooking in the Dutch oven. Last video you saw, we made bean chili. Now this is a non-bean chili. It's got uh, red, yellow peppers. You can add green orange if you want to that's the kind of the component that would be the beans threw some celery in there got hamburger garlic chopped onions and a mccormick uh chili seasoning packet that i had I'm gonna let this cook down for probably another 10-15 minutes uh put it in a bowl add some cheese and call it good so uh, it's a way in which you can make chili without having to Use beans if you don't like beans or you have dietary issues with beans. So if you've got a wood stove in your tent and it's a permanent kind of situation, one of these uh, thermostats or thermometers that go on the, the stove pipe really makes a big difference. I can tell just by looking at it, let me get a good light on it, where and what's going on inside. If it's in the white area, I gotta add wood and try to get it stoked up. If it's in the yellow, we're in good shape. If it's in the red, I've gone too far and I've got to get some of that heat out. But it works really, really well. Got it $5 at a yard sale at, the local, at a nearby town. Uh, so they run for, they run like 25 to 30, I think, is what I looked up. But they just, they're magnet. They stick to the pipe and they tell you exactly what's going on. You can see as we've been talking, it's been getting closer to closer to the red. So I've got to vent some of that heat out so we don't overburn the pipe and cause problems there so good little thing to have it lets you know what's going on inside your stove there's the final product 
light's going to be a little purple because i got a grow light. There we go. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, you can cook it as long as you want. You can wait until the onions and peppers are completely soft. Or you can cook it until it has a little crunch in it. Got some cheese in there. And there's, it's really not a whole lot different than bean chili. Outside of maybe a little texture uh, area. But that's uh, what's for supper. Good morning from the Northwoods of Wisconsin deer stand. Cold night last night. Uh, neighboring town said it was 32 at 515 when I got up at the tent it showed uh, 34 we were in a frost advisory I have not seen any frost but it's so cold that the leaves are just falling off the trees with no wind haven't seen anything have seen a couple of birds and two very small squirrels uh, I'm sitting in the stand that's near, right off the ATV trail, where we have seen deer activity quite a bit. If you look through, um, kind of in that area, you'll see, yeah, orange tape on a tree. I put that on there way early in August, whenever I had a trail camera set up very close to that. I had a lot of activity of the deers coming off out of the center portion of the property. I do have a trail camera right there, and we've had three different deer on that camera over the course of the last four days. Tuesday night at 6.30, and then 11.20 one night, and there was another day that we had some deer activity on it. So just because it's near the ATV trail, um, at times it doesn't seem to be affected by it. So, I'm going to climb down, done about all I can do here to try to lure anything in. I'm going to head back to camp, get the fire stoked in the tent, get breakfast going, and there's a couple of jobs I want to do before I get out of here. And I'm not sure if I'll be up here next week, next weekend, because on Friday it's supposed to be 80% chance of rain, Saturday... 60% chance of rain on Sunday, 40% chance of rain. So, driving three hours, six hours round trip to set in the tent for most of the weekend and not be able to do anything, I don't know if that's a wise decision, um, but we're still got some time to decide uh, and see what the weather and patterns may or may not do for next week. So, I will see you back at the camp when we get breakfast going. Also, for those who are wondering, this weekend is statewide youth firearm for deer. That's why I'm in orange. Uh, it's the requirement. Maybe not everybody knows about that or follows that. But uh, everybody who's hunting this weekend in any capacity, except for waterfowl hunters, are required to be in orange in the woods. Yeah, it got cold last night, sat in the stand. I'm going to have to dress warmer than what I thought I was going to, I thought I did. I'm going to have to dress warmer uh, next time uh, when it gets this cold. So how hot can this 10 by 12 foot Ozark Trail get? Well, when I packed the stove full whenever I got back from hunting because I was cold. It got all the way up to the red. I don't have a flashlight on me here. Hold on. It got all the way up to the red, which is over fired. And now it's down to the yellow. And here we're setting at... Right at 91 degrees, 92 degrees. So, it can get quite warm in here and that heat will hold for a little bit. It's not gonna hold all day long, but very warm and cozy. Nothing like the warmth of a wood stove. For breakfast, I have pancakes and then I also have 
hash browns, but I've mixed eggs in with it because in order to make the hash browns, I have to use an egg or eggs, and I had egg supplement or substitute, so I just poured the rest of that in with the hash browns, and I'm going to add a little ketchup, and that'll be it for breakfast. One of the jobs I want to do is I want to take and tack the bottom of this Halloween sign to the post. The tacticam, security, cell phone, trail cameras there. And every time it's windy, this thing flops around and we get like a dozen or two dozen pictures a day of that uh, doesn't cost anything, package deal, but just want to prevent that. So we'll tack that up. Okay, I spoke about it last week in the video. We've got a lot of pine down by where we parked the car. There's pine, 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 pine. Good dry pine. So what I do is when I have a little time, I'll keep splitting it and breaking it down until little twigs, you throw a little birch bark or just a uh, piece of cardboard or scrap or a junk mail underneath this and this will take off very easily inside or out and I just got in a little crate here and that will be sufficient for a number of weeks so it's dry getting it cut so it stays dry I'm going to put it in the tent and then also going to go down and pick up some more wood that is currently dry and cut some more top the wood box off in the tent as it's supposed to be a wet week just so there's dry wood to be used either in the campfire for cooking or in the tent for getting things started and then I can always put the wet wood on top of that dry wood when that stove is really really hot and it'll get burning. Okay so we have one of these little camp toilets that uh, we have here next to our tent or outhouse porta potty. Starting to get cold so the way it works is there's a water reservoir for clean water to flush and then it goes into the holding tank and you close off the holding tank. It is currently empty and as the temperatures drop I don't want frozen water in there busting the system. So I'm going to use windshield washer fluid. Now I know there's RV f uh, type of fluids in which are used in that in this type of situation but I don't have any so this is good down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit so if we get to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit we've got a whole lot more problems than our toilet freezing so I'm just going to top off the reservoir in that and then that will be and I'll cycle it through and that will keep the toilet functioning and not freezing okay got that all loaded that's what I cut last week there's still a lot of twigs and limbs and small stuff that just doesn't, uh, is not practical to drag up. Got that to cut. I've got another piece of pine there to cut. Those to bring up. And then I can start dropping some of these dead pine uh, here. So that's up the hill we go before and after. Plus, the wood box is completely full inside of the tent with good dry wood.
Okay, what I'm trying to do here is a recipe I saw off YouTube channel, Kenny of All Trades. He's a truck camper out of Minnesota. What he takes is a pudgy pie maker and he butters two pieces of bread face down and then he fills the inside like a, it's like grilled cheese, but he puts uh, pie filling, your favorite pie filling. You put them together. You put it on one side and then you put the bread on and you put it together. I've got a double here. And what you're supposed to come out with is basically a buttered toasted bread with very warm pie filling inside of it. I think we're pretty close. Huh? That's not bad. The only reason it's taken a while is because I'm getting ready to leave and I don't want to put a whole bunch of wood on this stove on this fire and then have to pour water on it to put it out. But it's a two Mississippi hot. So when I get it done, I'll show it to you. Okay, the results. You want, I, I think you want the butter to be a little on the toasted side. That side's not toasted as much, but you can see the pie filling oozing out. That's going to be really good. And I will do the second one. You just put your bread in here. It's already hot. And then you take your pie filling and mound on a safe amount. And it's not going to completely cover your, well, I just spilled right there, covered uh, piece of bread there. And then you just close it up. Lock it in. And put it over the fire and let that cook for about oh, five eight minutes and it turns out that so well worth the uh, effort there well thank you so much for hanging out with me this weekend simple weekend here at peaceful pines our permanent campsite in the north woods of wisconsin appreciate that very much didn't see any deer it wasn't my time yet so if you made it this far thank you so much why don't you put wood w-o-o-d in the sub in the comments below and let me know that you made it this far appreciate that very much thanks for spending the weekend with me and until next time we'll see you then